What's up everybody, it's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment and as always, honor and privilege to be here. Today, we have the honor and privilege of being joined by Clee Bone Sloan. It's good, bro. Thanks for coming through, man. It's all good. Yes, we're here celebrating the, the street dedication to Easy e in Compton. It's amazing to be here. Why did you decide that you wanted to come through? Well, first of all, I'm shooting a documentary about the city of Compton, 100 years of Compton. So it was, it was, it was kind of uh, obvious that I needed to be here, you know what I'm saying? So, and, you know what I mean, I grew up same era out of EVE. -E. I'm a big fan of EVE, -E. and uh, you know what I'm saying. That's why I'm here. Okay. Yeah. And EVE -E in particular, what? He's one of my favorite artists. I think he's one of the most important people in rap history. Mm -hmm. But for you, what makes him such a significant artist, a significant figure? I agree with you. He's definitely one of the most significant hip hop artists in history. Uh, his brash delivery, that 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 squeaky voice, gangster voice. You know what I'm saying? It kind of shifted. The, the, the frequency, it, it shifted the audios of who this guy is, and we knew this guy was kind of real when, when he right. got up, when he was on the mic. There was something authentic about him every time he touched the mic, you know, and he was more than a rapper. And then, you know, you think about the, the mind shift, it goes from a slash uh, ex-drug dealer to a rapper to getting the street in Compton, you know what I'm saying, it's pretty big. That's a real shift for me. And, and on that point in particular, what, do you, what does it say to you as somebody growing up here, being in the mix, that the government used to be against NWA, Easy e Ruthless Records, and now he's getting the street? What does that that's tell you? That's a great point. Great point, because it's full circle. You know what I mean? They went full circle. They kind of, they definitely was hating on Easy e Dr. Dre, NWA, but in full circle now these guys are getting their flowers. Dre's getting his flowers while he's alive. Easy's getting his flower away while he's dead. So it's just really, really a beautiful full circle of, uh, of you know, the journey of hip hop. And speaking of the journey of hip hop, the three, I think. Pivotal things that set off gangster rap was PSK by Scooby D, then you had Six in the Morning with Ice T, and then you had Boys in the Hood with Easy E. So look, the minds are, uh, my street that kicked off is, 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 is Six in the Morning, Ice T, okay. uh, uh, Boys in the Hood, NWA, and Batter Ram Toddy T. Toddy T, okay. Yeah, let's not forget Toddy T, because what he did was he brought the awareness of what was going on in Compton. Yeah, Batter Ram. Yeah, yeah, so people sleep on that one too. And there's a guy named Mixmaster Spade. Spade. Of course. So you talk about Compton, you gotta mention Spade. Okay. You know what I mean? And he was the guy, a little older than them, and he lived in the Bronx. People and he had the same song? Yeah, he had the same song, yeah. but he was an amazing DJ. He was an amazing DJ. So that being said, with Mr. Spencer Spade, Toddy T, Scooby D, Ice T. I love Scooby D, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's my favorite rapper of all okay, time. Yeah, he's the shit, he's the shit. So that being said, what made Boys in the Hood so different out here? How did that, how and why did that hit so different? Because when it hit, it was the texture of what we were doing. Like, like it was almost like, you know, a, a musical documentary for all of us. You know, we, we're fighting with the cops, we're fighting with each other, you know what I'm saying? We're poverty stricken, we find any type of means to make money. So it was an anthem for any guy that was in the streets for real at the time. And then once it came on the radio, it, it inspired us. You know, the spotlight was on us a little bit, you know right. what I mean? And that, that's, that, I think that sums it up right there. Okay. And another thing is people forget that Easy Does It, Easy E's debut album came out before Straight Out Compton. That's right. People also forget that Easy Does It was a gold and platinum album well, before Straight Out Compton. Yeah, exactly. it was a, yeah, it was, it was and one we of want the Easy hits. was a hit. That yeah. was one of the first really big West Coast albums. Right, absolutely. So that being said, what did Easy Does It mean to you and what songs did you like or you know take from that album? I mean Easy Does It, you know, the simplicity of it, which was made it great. You know what I mean? It took the name, you know what I mean, which is easy and easy does it. The melodies and, and the way they structured their song was pretty simple. And everybody we followed want it. Easy. Yeah, yeah, real, real easy. We want it easy, you know what I'm saying? So that structure of it, like sim simplicity sells. Simplicity always goes big. So I, that's why I think the simpleness, the simpleness of it made it great. Okay. And then with this honor, honor we also have, of course, the movie Straight Compton was big. And we've kind of gone in a wave of, I think, of people overlooking Easy e then giving him highlights, and now it's back. So mm -hmm. why do you think Easy e in particular's legacy has been able to sustain so long, even though he's been gone for he's so long? He's authentic, and I was taken by his own Strata County, by the way. And yeah. he's authentic, man. He's authentic, you know, and, and the people recognize authentic, uh, authenticity. The people recognize fake. He was just so authentic. Like I said, every time he got on the mic, you knew this guy was really from the streets, and you knew this guy might be a little more than a rapper. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Would you agree? Of course. Okay, yeah, yeah. And he had and he had the business acumen. He of had course. so many different artists signed to him and that was revolutionary at the that time. Was revolutionary. Too. Yeah. So for you, 
seeing a guy that not only was a rapper who had evolved from what he was doing in the streets, but then was such a businessman with so many artists, so many different songs. What did that mean to you as a person, as a fan? Well, see, in that era, at the time, all the neighborhoods were kind of jockeying to make to have labels and to sign artists. So when we when Easy started signing artists, that made everybody else open their eyes and say, hey, maybe I can do it too. Because like he was right next to us. We, we passed him in the streets and he signed these artists. He's making his own label. So we felt like we could do it too. So what would you say is Easy E's legacy? Uh, Easy Easy E's uh, legacy is Compton, city of Compton, the texture of, of what he grew up out of these streets. And then amplifying that to the world. I mean, the world, like Compton has really shifted the world, which is really crazy. It's only nine square miles. It's not a big it's tiny. Part. It's tiny. I mean, the first time I came, I drove through Holanda. I was in and out. So what's in the dirt yeah. of Compton to produce the Dr. Dre, the Venus and Serena, the Easy E? I think it's like 2,000 professional athletes. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, you know what I mean? And it's the oldest city. And your boy Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. He's, Kevin Costner's in, in this film I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Costner. So, and it's one of the oldest cities in America. You know, it's incorporated 1888. Let's G.D. Compton, the white man, established it in 1867. You know what I mean? So, like the legacy of Easy and the city of Compton that has a lot of stigma, now it's, it's going full circle. I think the world is open arms to Compton. I was in Paris, I saw Compton hats. I was in Switzerland, I saw Compton hats. Nobody's wow. speaking English, but they walk around with Compton hats. So that tells you right there. That tells you. Right, right? What it is. Cleveland Sloan, thanks for coming through to Unique Access, man. Really appreciate it. My man. Thank you, thank you. For sure. Be sure to check out the History of Gangster Rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangster Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangster Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, Bob, on your TV back with that WA? Yo MTV, it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.